Thank you for pressing play, you're in for a treat. This podcast is all about providing you with long-term holistic methods of improving your mental and emotional health, as well as methods to instantly reduce stress, pain, and anxiety. Methods for dealing with conflicts, job stress, and relationship difficulties, grief, illness, and so much more. While this content is phenomenal and can greatly assist you, we must remind you that it is not intended to replace your psychiatrist or medical doctor. This discussion is a broader discussion about mental and emotional health and should not be interpreted as specific advice in a specific situation because every situation is unique. Good morning and happy Wednesday to everyone. Today's mental and emotional health awareness, or health, yes, health awareness from a holistic perspective is uh, thrilled to have with us Mr. Robert Jones, CEO, and well, he's the founder of the <laughs> iNetrepreneur Network, formerly Network Together. Networking together is always better, and they have just been growing and flourishing, and he is going to be with me for a little bit this morning. We are just so happy to have you and get your take on happiness and yeah, I just would love to hear that. I, that that's what I want to know. And so while you, you who are listening, I want your take on happiness too. So you just put it in the in the chat and we'll have a conversation about it. <laughs> well, Kimberly, thank you so much for having me on today. I appreciate you so much. And, uh, you know, I want everyone to know that, um, you know, we've known each other for, for many years now, um, over a decade. And yes. I, I feel blessed. I feel gracious. I feel happy you know, to have known you that long, and you've given support to our community, our members, um, to me personally, and my wife as well, who is the CEO of the iEntrepreneur yeah. Network and Network Together. And, um, you know, a couple of words I can think um, and say about you are is, you know, you, you are unconditionally pursuant of making people's lives better. And that's mm -hmm. what I really am amazed about with you. I've, I've done EFT with you and um, what a wonderful training. So if you guys have not been able to do that with Kimberly out there, I, I please, I, I implore you to, to take a session with her. So thank just you. thank you so much for having me today, Kimberly. It's my pleasure because I, I can't wait to hear what you have to say. You, you always have a powerful and uplifting and encouraging and just enriching words to give and so uh yeah i i'm honored that you are here to share and uh likewise the reflection is 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 yours well you know one of the things that that you and i have talked about this many times actually over the years this meaning of happiness and normally we take happiness within the construct of uh, what does happiness look like uh, versus being unhappy or what does happiness look like versus you know um, the word joy and you know i i always like to look at you know these words and and to provide them meeting within a certain amount of context before i approach them in, in any way so since we're not doing a comparison contrast between joy and happiness, and we're not looking at happiness, you know, versus being unhappy, you know, I, I had to approach today on looking like at the word happiness itself and whether someone is conditionally happy or unconditionally happy, you know, and there's a couple of different ways to look at that, isn't there, Kimberly? Absolutely, absolutely. You hit the nail bullseye right there. You did. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and one of the things that, that I've learned from you and, um, and, you know, and others, but what I love about what you do is when, when you look at happiness, you train, um, you know, about conditional happiness and unconditional happiness. And, you know, what I found in my life is, is they both have meaning. And, and they both are needed. And, and sometimes I feel like in the conversations that we have is, oh, you know, it's just all about being, you know, um, unconditionally happy and you need to be happy every moment. And there's no room for, for sorrow and there's no room for, you know, patting yourself back in edification because your journey should be so full that there is no room for anything else. And I, and I think that, you know, what I'd like to say is happiness is much deeper than that. You know, I yeah. think that when we when we look at being unconditionally happy, you know, we need to look at, you know, being unconditionally happy as more of a state of being. A state of being, exactly. And and there is a place for sorrow and grief. And because 
when we feel that we have lost something, Mm -hmm. that's a feeling that we have and we have to process it, which can take some time. It it doesn't have to take a lot of time. That's what us health health coaches are for. But, uh, But it's definitely something we don't want to stuff ignore, resist, or mm-hmm. push away. Well, you know, you know, in certain Deny. ways, yeah. And so when, when you look at happiness and you look at it as a, a state of being, you're really looking at like, what type of contract are you creating with happiness itself? You know, and, and, and many times within that those contracts, it's not just the largest contract from, you know, this moment forward until, you know, my, my physical being goes away and I become spiritual. You know, there's a lot of mini contracts, even micro contracts that we have with our state of happiness. And sometimes, you know, conditional happiness can actually be a supercharger or motivator to keep us in our state of being of, you know, our overall happiness. And, and sometimes when I hear people train happiness, it's, it's like they want to make it like they're adversarial. Well, you know, there's no room for being conditionally happy because that just means, you know, you're just trying to satisfy some type of commission to get you know, conditioned to get happy again. Well, you know, life is more complicated than that, isn't it, Kimberly? Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> and in fact, when we actually <clears throat> really appreciate and understand it, there is there is no adversary. Yes. It, 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 even the bad and the good, it's all to build us, to grow us, which is a part of our purpose for being here. Yes. It's a contrast. It's not an adversary. It's a contrast for us to appreciate both. And and that's, that's you gave me goosebumps with that. And because it, it, it matters so much, because so much of the time, Kimberly, I, I think people, when they teach and train and 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 they don't go deeper, they look at happiness as linear, you know, but happiness, you know, whether it's conditional or unconditional is not a linear construct. It's actually what I would say, kind of like an expansion contract, meaning it, it's like a matrix where it's, it's up and down, it's left and right, it's, it's depth and width. And, and when you look at it that way, you know, it, it's like an ebb and flow of what we're working with when it comes to to happiness. Mm, and, I love and, that visual. <laughs> and and so part of what I found with happiness is not only it's is it a state of being, it's a state of giving and it's a state of receiving. And mm. see, that's where that's where even within your happiness, you you can throttle up and throttle down a little bit on certain you know micro victories and certain micro contracts of of happiness because I also believe that you know conditions also create certain types of motivation you know it you know you know in three months I'm going to lose a certain amount of weight you know it doesn't mean that you're not unconditionally happy but it's also okay to celebrate the victory yeah, and and totally. i think that and i think that that's what we need to say the construct of conditional happiness and unconditional happiness they can work synergistically together for the overall effect of this matrix of a person's feeling you know and how they relate in their contract with happiness i believe i i agree i agree i love that concept because actually I had never considered happiness in the context of unconditional versus conditional. I may have, but I didn't use those terms. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I actually just this morning, I was thinking of happiness in the terms of external versus internal, which is Mm -hmm. kind of the same thing because the internal is unconditional and the external is conditional upon some event happening or not happening, whether we're happy or unhappy. And uh, yeah, go ahead. No, and and, and what I love about that and see, you know, and and like with what I'm studying right now is um, part of, of what we're finding is, is so much of the time I say, even in the business community as a business owner, don't be a part from the community, be a part of the community. And, and I think what we're understanding a little bit more of happiness and joy and dissatisfaction and, you know, the receiving and giving in the state of being is, is we're not apart from the universe. 
I mean, br- let me break it to you. Yeah. No one's apart from the universe. We no are all one. a part of the universe. And so when we look at the expansion and the contraction of our in, our happiness with it, you know, we may say, well, it's internal. But the thing is, is if we're not disjointed, if we're a part of that universe, we're actually, you know, there there is not necessarily an external or internal happiness anymore, you know. Part of that journey is is being allowed to say, I am a part of this universal fabric of expansion, and I'm part of this universal um, um, construct of this um, matrix, you know, that says, you know, you are to be and you are to give and receive, and it's how you interpret that is where happiness lies. And in and, and that's kind of a little bit of take on how I view happiness, Kimberly. I, I agree with you 100%. What came to me, though, was if you might be able to help someone who goes, what? <laughs> you know, I don't get it. How, how are we a part of the universe? Can you give someone an insight on how we are actually connected? We're all one. Just but, if, you, if you can do it, because I know we don't have a lot of time. But. Yeah, you know, I... You know, and it goes back to you know what we would call, let's say, the the uh, quantum of physics, and the, and 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 the universal meaning of vibration, and you know what is small and what is large, and you know what I've been learning in my training, both um, you know, with science and with 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 spiritualness, is mm-hmm. is no matter how we look at who we are in any state that we are being in is that we are all a part of universal vibrations. And so if we look at universal vibrations and and we just define it as happiness, happiness vibrates at a certain level, Mm -hmm. a certain frequency. And, And what it is, is the state of being is the status quo of the actual vibration that I have within my own happiness but the the receiving and giving or the conditional vibrations of happiness also allow me to tweak and tune my happiness as I'm in that state of being and in that moment and that's how I see that we're a part of the universe because every vibration is is you know some are so small they go right through our body Kimberly and 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 some are some are, are are large enough to touch us, and you know our body as well isn't dynamic. It, it doesn't like stay in one piece. There's energy that evolves out of us, and it's through that energy process and creation. Once we start figuring, you know, what that vibration is, we can allow this energy that's already there for us to work to our benefit. You I'm, know, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I'm so glad that you're bringing this up because that's exactly how I work <laughs> and with people's energy, with my energy, abso- their energy. Absolutely. And, and so when, what you were doing and when, when, my, when my state of being, and, and this is very important because um, I want everyone to know this, you know, when I, my state of being you know, was, was down for a day because there were, there were some things going on and there's some health issues. And my, you know, my wife had just gotten through COVID, you know, it, it is not unreasonable that my vibration wasn't at the level that I would have normally liked in my normal status quo. And so what happens is, is when you work with, with someone like Kimberly, you know, she's able to help tap energy into you and be able to you know raise that vibration up so my my state of being in in my normal happiness you know in that contract that i have just you know you know how would i say leveled up or increased or became the correct frequency for me again and that was a part of the condition when she because here's the conditional part of happiness see you affected on me can a conditional intent that allowed me to break the frequency mode that I was in and tune into the frequency mode that was me mm. and that's how I know you know physically spiritually mentally emotionally etc that this energy it, it works yeah, absolutely we're the fact that we exist <laughs> is yes. proof that it works. I mean, that it, it is, you know, the, the, it says that the world was spoken into existence 
And this is true. This is true with the vibration of Aum. And everything else has been born from that. And, and we are just living proof of that. You know, and, 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 and part of the things are, it's like, well, you know, how can that apply to me? You know, and, and I think, you know, since I work with a lot of entrepreneurs, I, I, I many times I bring it back to entrepreneurs or I bring it back to family members or, you know, and, and sometimes we make these statements, Gus, if, 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 if I would have said it differently or I'll be happy when he does this or, you know, if I can make this, you know, sales go or something, I, I think what, what happens is, is we make the wrong contract because, you know, our, con our condition, you know, you know, becomes an attachment and see, as opposed to, you know, it's okay to say, hey, I want to make that, I want, you know, you know, that person, you know, are they going to make me happy or not? I can't control that. Or if I make mm -hmm. this goal, I'll be happy when I get there. I, I think what you and I are trying to say to most people is it's, you know, it, you don't have to make the goal to be happy. You know, right. you, you, you can, you can be unconditionally happy. What, what I think we're trying to say in, in that contract of getting to that place is, is what that can be is it can be the edification and the celebration of the happiness that you had to get there. And that is like a marker, like a birthday or an anniversary or, or some other factor of, um, you know, in happy expression. So, you know, yeah. I, this is I such know. a great conversation. I, I wish I could stay on for the I full hour. I'm enjoying every moment. <laughs> oh my I, gosh. There, I know that you have to go and we have one less than a minute. So yeah. what would you love to leave the listening audience with as you? You know, I, I think I can only apply to me what I can give. And if it resonates with others, then I, I'm, I'm happy, but it may not resonate with, with everyone. But when it comes to happiness, you know, when it comes to unconditional happiness, that is the state of being that you choose to live by, that, that, that you have that contract. You can make that contract with the frequency that you want in your own happiness. That's your unconditional part. But I also believe that there's a state of giving and a state of receiving you know, of all these milestones that you have in life. And I think that when you reach those milestones, you know, in that traditional and conditional sense, you know, it's not that you're going to become happy then. I think what it really allows you to do is to celebrate your happiness then. Yes. And that's what I want to share with everyone today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Robert. I'm thrilled, like I said, honored that, that we had this time with you here today. And uh, you will be back. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank, thank yeah. you so much. I, I appreciate you, Kimberly, and I appreciate this time today. Thank you for gracing us with your wonderful words, encouragement, <laughs> enlightenment, and you have an amazing rest of your day. Bye-bye. For now. So the broadcast continues, the live cast continues. Robert just had to go. He was able to drop in and give us some nuggets, which I really appreciate it. And I want to say to you who are listening to, who are saying, what is he talking about? Uh, that the unconditional happiness, how do I get that? How do I create that? What, what is it? It is the happiness that we get from inside. You've probably heard it said that happiness begins within. Lasting happiness comes from within. Well, that's what he's talking about. Unconditional happiness is the lasting happiness that comes from within us. How do we create that? How do we get it? Especially when everything just seems like it's not good. Oh, we have a relationship that just seems like a relationship from hell. Uh, <clears throat> the, no matter what we do, we can't do right. No matter what we do, the person is angry and takes their anger out on us, even if they look like they're Miss, Mr. or Miss Perfect at the world, to the world. But we get the, the, the garbage, uh, the, you know, all the bad stuff. Even if uh, we feel like 
what did I do for my children to do the things that they do, that they don't honor me, they don't respect me, they don't even visit me or call me. Perf no birthday presents, no Mother's Day, no nothing, or Father's Day. If, you know, my job, I can't seem to please my boss. Everything, my, my, my report performance come back, needs improvement, needs improvement. You don't do this right. You don't do that right. If, if we're surrounded by all of that, how can we be happy? Right? Okay, you want the answer? <laughs> so the answer is to look at those situations, circumstances, and conditions. And you can do a couple of things. One is you can be curious, first of all. Instead of seeing it as a bad thing, you can go, why is this in my life? Assuming, I'm going to give you an assumption, assuming you did nothing wrong to bring it into your life, okay? You, you did attract it into your life, but not for harm for anyone. Actually, just the opposite. It's for good for everyone. Stay with me, because I know you're going, stop, stay with me, okay? When we have the context that life is about evolving, growing, spiritually, okay? We cannot view our problems from a human perspective and get good answers. The only solution to our problem is, is going to be a win-win for everyone involved. And that solution can only come when we apply the spiritual definition of love, which is unconditional acceptance. It begins with unconditional acceptance. So first of all, it's neutral. It, it's not good or bad. Okay. Then when we learn more about it, when we understand that actually it did come to do something good. It came to help us grow in the way that we, the, in the only way that would cause the kind of growth we need to experience for our purpose for being here now. Am I, am I making any sense to you now? Okay, so I'm going to, I said a lot, so I'm going to rephrase it, recap it. Number one, we are spiritual beings having a human experience for a specific purpose. Okay, actually lots of purposes. Okay, we've got, like, it, like Robert was saying, we have the, the macro purpose, then we have the micro purpose, and we have all the other little purposes in between, like our accomplishments and things that bring us joy, right? Things that bring us happiness on the human level, okay? But when we look at our life and our experiences, and all that is around us and happening from the spiritual perspective. And please understand, separate spiritual from religion or church. They're very different. Church and religion are man's way of seeking to understand spirit, okay? Which is nothing wrong with it. As long as it works for you. If it doesn't work for you, listen up, okay? Because <laughs> I have another perspective. I came up through that system and I just kept asking why, why, whoa, you know, wanted to know more. And this is what I learned. So we're, when you think of the universe and we have the macro universe and we're, a microcosm of the universe. And we have a microcosm of the universe within our very being. So we are all connected. We are connected to each other as a, a, a humanity. And then we're connected with the universe and the, the infinite being uh, vibrationally. We, with our thinking mind, in our heart 
have the ability to create our beingness. Now, there are several parts of us. We have our soul, we have our mental, our physical, our energetic, and our uh, metaphysical, just for lack of a, a better word. But inter I said energetic, energetic, mental, emotional, physical, spiritual. There we go. Okay, <laughs> another five. So we have to take into account all of those aspects of ourself. Happiness, as Robert pointed out, is a vibration. The way we vibrate at happiness, no matter what's going on around us, is how we respond to what's going on around us. So what's going on around us is information, okay? Yeah, somebody just cussed you out. Well, okay, the information is they're upset. Then that has nothing to do with you. <laughs> Unless you want to be upset, you can respond to their upsetness with upset. It's not going to get you anywhere that you want to go. <laughs> Unless you want to be in a fight. Uh, so hear me. You have control over your happiness. When you do not allow other uh, external circumstances, events, behaviors, and, you know, their ways of, of relating with you, whether it's harsh, vulgar, uh, not nice, demeaning, condescending, narcissistic, it doesn't matter what the out, the external uh, environment is. You have the power to control your internal environment. You're the, the captain of that ship. <laughs> and you decide where it goes, how it reacts, how it interacts. And the goal of our life is to evolve and grow into a more loving being, a higher vibrational being. And we do that through these experiences that we have. And believe it or not, you're probably going to really turn me off now. <laughs> these experiences that we're having, guess what? Our soul, us, the essence of us, created them in this life, created this life, chose our parents, chose our ancestral line, chose our bloodline, chose all of the, the, uh, the people that would be in our lives, the people that lived, the people that died, the people that uh, hurt us, the people that really hurt us. These were all chosen. We signed a contract because they are what we need to grow into who we're here to be. And it is a better person. I guarantee you, it is a better person. Because love always makes everything better. Now, I want to really, I want to clarify when I, when I say love, what I mean. Love is first unconditional acceptance, appreciation, and then gratitude for what that situation, circumstance, condition, trauma, experience, nightmare gave us, what it, what it gave us that we couldn't get any other way. Now, I'm not saying the experiences that you're so supposed to be happy and feel good about the experiences when you're in them. Yeah, some people may, but that's not a necessary. There's nothing wrong if you are not, okay? Because we are human beings. That's a part of our existence. And it every aspect of our humanness is intentional. It has purpose. So we're not, it's not the enemy. Our ego is not the enemy. Our human nature is not our enemy. We have no enemies. If we perceive that we have an enemy, then we have an enemy. But outside of that perception, there are no enemies. Okay? It really is all good. It really is all good. And my challenge to you is to seek the good. No matter what the situation is, 
I'm not saying uh, if you're in an abusive relationship, I'm not, I'm not telling you to enable that person to abuse you. That's not what I'm talking about. Because for when you unconditionally love and accept yourself, when you do, you're not going to tolerate that kind of treatment. Okay. And you will find a way out of it. In fact, as you change, as you really, truly, unconditionally accept yourself, look at that person that you that is abusing you and ask yourself, what is it that in them that, uh, that is there anything in them that bothers me that I don't like? And if there is, then that's something that's a reflection of you. What you see in that person is a reflection of you. And probably you see good in them. That's why you're there. But they're, you know, they're lashing out because of the reflection that they're seeing, which has nothing to do with you, it has to do with them. My point is this, when I, in that context, is you're in that relationship suffering for a reason. Doesn't mean you have to stay there. As you unconditionally accept and love yourself, something will tell you when it's time to go, how to go the whole way. It will just, the doors will open up. And if they are not, ask yourself, what is it that I need to learn from this? And when you get it, when you learn it, those doors are going to open up. Me to go. Because, or the person's going to change one or the other because you have, it's served its purpose. I hope you're hearing me because this is really important. I'm not telling anyone to stay in a relationship. Matter of fact, I'm going to say the disclaimer. So this is a general discussion. Okay. It's not meant as specific advice in a specific situation because every situation is unique. And it, before you, if it's a serious situation, you need some one on one. Okay, so that you can actually get the real help that you need. When a person works one on one with me, the person who I don't give advice, we go inside, we go inside of you, we go with your soul, and we get the advice that your soul has because that's your expert. There's no one else that's the expert on your life but your soul because that's who created it. This is why we are not qualified to judge ourselves or anyone else because we don't know the whole picture. We don't even understand it. We don't know the beginning or the end of our life. Now, if we do, if we do, we're not going to judge because we understand it and we know the purpose of every aspect of it. Okay. I really, I want to interact. I, if I, I don't see anyone, but I really want your, if you're listening and you have comments, you have questions, please, I want to create a dialogue. And if you're listening after the recording, you know, after it's recorded and you're just watching the recording and you have questions, comments, please don't hesitate to reach out uh, to, to dialogue with me, to, uh, to meet with me one-to-one. I am accessible. And now I will say I'm not accessible to nonsense. And what I mean by that is somebody just has no regard for what I'm saying. They're not interested. They just want to be malicious. That's them. But I'm not going to entertain it. <laughs> I just, you know, I don't believe it. Well, I'll just leave it there. <laughs> I'll just leave it there. I love you. I love you, each and every one of you. And that is unconditional acceptance. That love is unconditional acceptance. You can be who you are. I don't have a problem with it. When I say I won't entertain nonsense, it's because it will get nowhere. You know, the person just wants to behave in the way that they behave. They're trying to get a reaction. and. I just won't give them one, except for, you know, maybe a heart. And uh, yeah, 
if someone really wants to engage and they, and you know, I don't care where they are, if they want to get more, if they want to grow, and that's their intention is to understand, be understood and understand, I'm okay with that. I want you to feel understood and understand and grow because that's how we, that's how we grow. That's how we help each other. You know, we, we meet the people that are, that are, that can meet us where we are. And when we come together like this, then we can grow. We can grow. And while we might separate for a time, it's okay. That time together served its purpose because we are all connected no matter what. Even if we're across the world in a whole nother country, time and place setting, we're still all connected. And when you have that understanding and that perspective, even in a little bit, it's a seed and it will grow. It will grow, especially if it's watered. And listening to things that resonate with you, that water that seed to help it to grow is the way it happens. I, I just, I, as you can tell, this is, I am passionate about this subject. I am a passionate about you growing. I am passionate about you understanding that the reason we have a mental and emotional health crisis, the reason we have a health crisis because the mental is a, emotional is a is a part of it is the, like the foundation most physical ailments come from spiritual emotional issues unresolved unaddressed stuffed resisted pushed down ignored denied and so when we address them yeah, there might be a little, might be some experience of pain, but here's the most important thing I want you to get if you don't get anything else. The most important thing I want you to get is that when you we experience pain and we know that we're going to be okay, that all is going to be good and this it's just hurting right now and we accept, we feel that hurt, and we understand and know that it has a purpose and it's gonna be okay. This is one of the things that the tapping does. This is how we transform pain into love by accepting the pain, appreciating the pain and understanding it has a purpose. And then when we find out what the purpose is, it's gone. It served its purpose. And now it's gone. And now you have the gift that it came to bring you. And there is where the love comes from. Now, I, I don't want anyone to misconstrue this as masochism or you know loving pain mm -mm. no that's not what we're talking about here we're talking about transforming pain you have it you feel it you honor it you understand it it has a good purpose to grow us into a stronger more loving understanding appreciative human being and thus spiritual and a soul our soul came here because it had work to do it needed to grow it needed to evolve and it chose every aspect of our life to accomplish that work some of us do it some of us do some of it some of us just do what needed to be done in this life and then we come back in another life to come to to continue but we're all evolving we're all growing into more loving beings one life at a time one experience at a time and you know sometimes our experiences a lot of times our experiences 
don't uh, end up in us growing in love, it takes, maybe it takes sometimes a lifetime for us to finally realize all those experiences were to grow us into love. And then we experience it at the end of the life. It happens. Uh, sometimes we don't experience it at all in this in, in the said life. And then we come back and to start it all over. But we're we're more evolved because we've experienced that life and it's in us. You know, you you I'm sure at some point you may have looked at a baby or been interacting with a baby and go, man. How do they know that? How, they're just a baby. They don't have enough life experience to know that or do that. or And they certainly didn't get it from their surroundings. That's the explanation. They've been here before. And you hear people say that all the time. Oh, they've been here before. They're an old soul. And it's true. It's true. Um, it just, I mean, I feel like right now today I have, expanded your awareness of the dimensions of life it's no longer just the 3d right it's no longer just the the physical body which is amazing all by itself all by itself i don't know if you've ever been to the uh body beyond what is it called? bodies revealed i love that display it is just it, it really epitomizes the the i'm looking for a word the phenomenal instrument that we are that our souls that the universe created for our souls to be able to evolve and and like i said that's just the physical part and how the life force energy comes in and just operates it so that look my hands, they just, they move as I, as I intend. We can see. And the way the whole eyes work and our mind and our taste bud, our tongue has all this, or, the uh, organs response on there. Just the body is amazing. The way it reacts, how we taste, how we process what we see with our eyes into our mind. And it, and then we digest it as we do our food and how it is becomes a part of us. Amazing. I am, I am, yeah, at a loss for words because it, it just, it, I get excited. I am in awe. I am in awe of me, you, the universe, what we are all a part of. And the mental and emotional health crisis that we have is because that knowledge is not mainstream. It's not well known. It's not accepted. But let me tell you, the people who have this knowledge and appreciate it, understand it, and accept it, and don't try to or need to feel validated for it are the ones who thrive. There are people who are uh, depressed and they have this knowledge, but there, there are, there's another more basic need that is not being met and therefore it's not serving them. As an emotional health coach and I, gave myself that name. I hadn't heard of it before, but now there are lots of us. Again, the universe is amazing. Just raised us all up at such a time as this, when we are needed. And so my encouragement to you is, if not me, someone else. That's why I, that's one of the reasons I created this, this live stream, this podcast, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> this broadcast, is to let you know that I'm not the only, I know I'm not the only one, but to let everyone know that I know I'm not the only one. There are others, and I want to introduce you to them because they're amazing. And every single one, every single person, individual that I've had on this 
podcast with me is amazing. And guess what? So are you. So are you. And we want to help you bring that amazingness out. Shine your light. As my friend Angel, and I'll have her on here too, will tell you, shine on, shine on, bring your shine on to the world. And that is my intention with this broadcast is to let my shine on so that you can shine on and you can know that it's okay. As Mary Marianne Williamson said, that our, biz, our greatest fear is not failure. It is that our light of our own brightness, our own brilliance. Guess what though? You didn't create it. At least the, the human you didn't create it. The spirit you did. And honor that. Honor your spirit. Because in, at the spirit level, this is where we're all one. So when we all shine our light, it is one light with many hues. And I love this background because that's what it looks like. It is a, it's more, it's greater than that. That's, 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 that's a depiction, okay? But the, the real brightness and brilliance is like that. You see all those colors, all those different hues, all those little different lights and tones. That's us. Every single one of those lights, whether it's little or big or however, is us. And guess what? So those are that's probably a picture of the stars in the sky, the, the astral. But we are, a that's what we are. We are a part of that. We're a part of that. That's why they affect us. And they affect us in intimate ways. When we're born, all, where all of the celestial beings, all the planets are, the sun, the moon, they have their personalities at that given moment in time. We absorb them and they affect our life. But guess what? Our soul knew that and, and planned it that way so that these are the aspects of our life that we're here. It's like, it's like you're a servant, right? And, you're, and you go to get your, your charge. You know, what are your duties? And you come in and you're before the master, which is pure love, pure love. Okay. So it's not the kind of master that you might be thinking that's uh, dictatorial. Not at all. Not at all. And you're given your plate of, of, of things to work with. That's our, like our, our planetary birth chart is what it's called. It's the birth chart. And it has all kinds of information about our life in it. <clears throat> I don't focus a lot on it, uh, though, it, it, because it just is. And maybe I should focus more on it to be able to have better and quicker but more uh, interpretations of what's going on in my life. But, uh, you know, we're all evolving. And, and I'm not saying I'm perfect or I'm there, not by any means. No. But I am where I am and I'm and, it, and where I am is perfect for me. And where you are is perfect for you. And just the fact that you're hearing this, that you're hearing my words, that they're falling on your ears is a part of that process. It's a part of your growth. You were meant to hear this. This is not an accident. So if any part of it doesn't sit well with you, that's okay. Take what you can. Take what does sit well with you and run with it. No one, everyone is perfect according to their purpose. I always say that and, uh, and I always will. Everyone is perfect for their purpose for being here now. Because that is the nature of the universe and life. It all has purpose. It, it, the function of life is to grow into the fullness of love. And so everything that it happens is for that purpose. Everything. 
So whatever you're doing, keep that in your mind. As things happen, know there is a purpose for it. And if it affects you, if it catches your attention, then there's something in it for you. It could be very, it could be very small, seeming, in, seeming insignificant, or it could be huge, life transforming all in once. And whichever it is, it's all good. It's all good. I am still, yeah, looking for and want to entertain your questions, your comments, your challenges, your rebuttals. I welcome it all because it has meaning, it has purpose. If you have a question, it deserves an answer. And you can ask these questions to yourself. I'm going to take you into a little exercise here now. You're still with me? Or maybe you just tuned in. We're going to do some soul centering. And so if you're uh, in a place where you can, if you're not driving or working, and you can just sit still with your back straight up, good posture. We want energy to flow freely through our bodies. And your hands can just rest in your, la in your lap, palms up, hands open. And just take a nice deep breath. You can exhale through your nostrils or through your mouth, whichever you prefer. And as you take, so take a nice deep inhalation. And when you bring it all in and your belly's poking out and your chest is out and your, your rib cage is out, you're, you've filled it all with, with air, with oxygen, and just hold it right there before you let it out. And then you can slowly, slowly let it release it. Okay. And know that you are taking in, whenever you inhale, you're taking in powerful life force energy. And that life force energy is coming into your body. And you can take it wherever you want in your body to release stress, release pain, to release tension. And on your exhale is where you release whatever you're releasing. You're also, as you just as you inhale the life force energy, you're exhaling the dead cells that are no longer serving your body. And what I love, 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 love about nature is the trees exhale what we need to inhale, and we exhale what they need to inhale. And that just, I just love that. So our, okay, as we are inhaling, so we want to take that inhalation and on our exhale, knowing that we're releasing the dead cells and we're releasing whatever doesn't serve us, we can release intentionally tension in our body. So remember I said you can take it, take that inhalation with your awareness anywhere in your body. So I'm going to ask you to bring that up, take that awareness, eyes closed or soft, relaxed, to the crown of your head. And then on your exhale, as you're exhaling the dead cells, exhale the tension. If you've got any tension or any tightness in your head, I want you to release it with a relax, just release it on your exhale. And release it through your nostrils. That's a little more controlled, okay? Continue with your next inhalation. Bring it up to where you're, you left off on the release. And again, release the tension down through the muscles in your, your neck, out through your shoulders, down your biceps, your elbows, your forearms, your wrists your palms and out your fingertips. On the next inhalation, bring it back up to the throat area. This time you're releasing the tension through your, your collarbone, uh, your chest, your rib cage, 
or so through your waist, hips, thighs. Next inhalation, bring it your awareness down through your knees, your calves, you're releasing the tension through your calves, your ankles, your feet, and out your toes. And on your next inhalation, just take a scan from the crown of your head down through your body for any residual tension that you missed and release it with your exhale. Do that until you're feeling completely relaxed and then just focus on your breathing on your inhale and your exhale and ask yourself, you're now centered with yourself. And if you don't feel centered, just continue focusing on your breathing. Just close your eyes, follow your breath in and follow your breath out until you feel centered. And when you feel relaxed and centered, <clears throat> ask yourself the difficult questions and the answer will come to you in a feeling, a vision, words audibly and it will be confirmed when you wake up from that place and you decide that okay i'm back alert again you come back into the room just kind of count to to one to one from three or five four three coming back into filling my seat two hearing the sounds around me and one opening your eyes to be back where you started. Uh, you will have confirmation of the answer that you receive. And the answer will never be condescending or critical. Never. If that's the answer, that's not the answer. That's from your mind. Okay. Until next time, we thank you for joining me and the mental and emotional health awareness, holistic approach. And I look forward to hearing from you. I really would love to hear from you. Take care. Bye for now.